The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the host and co-chair of the webinar. My name is Edith Hansi, and uh, we have our team with us tonight and Brooks Carter, our division chair, which joined us for today's webinars. We represent the Human Development and Leadership Division of the American Society for Quality. This is, as you might uh, know by now, a global division aiming to enrich the personal and professional lives of our members and non-members across the global community. We continue to look for new speakers within the range of our body of knowledge, which can be found under my ASQ, Human Development and Leadership Community site. We host monthly webinars. If we are uh, interested or know somebody who is interested, we'll be happy to review their application. Again, we have transitioned from the website and we are now uh, with any content that has to do with our division present under my ASQ Human Development and Leadership Community site. Before we begin the webinar, let me go over some webinar rules. If there is any question or comment, please use the, the tab which mentions as question, not the chat, and we will answer the, your questions. The webinar will be held for 45 minutes. We will have a Q&A about 15 minutes. Those who attend for minimum 40 minutes, uh, they will receive a 0.1 uh, continuing education unit through an email, which I'll be sending after the webinar. And you can save that and use that as a, a claim for credit with ASQ. We're delighted to introduce you tonight with our guest speaker, Deborah Copielo, and uh, we will use this hour to reflect on leadership, as you might have noticed in the synopsis of our today's webinar. Debra is a founder of Illumination Partners. She applies expert knowledge, industry experience, and relentless energy to solving companies' issues. Debra began her career at Raven Company, where she was selected to participate in their manufacturing management development program, leading up to a role as a quality systems and planning manager in operations. Over for the next 20 plus years in quality and operational excellence roles, she has produced brilliant results in electronics, consumer communications, data communications, and so on. Debra spent her last 15 years or so specialized in the food, chemical, flavors, and fragrances industries. And as a quality and operational excellence executive, she thrives in rapidly changing organizations, in establishing stability and increasing team capability through teaching, coaching, leading organizations by aligning, which is so important, strategy to organizational vision. Debra has further demonstrated expertise, as recognized by now by American Society for Quality, ASQ. Uh, she's a certified Six Sigma Black Belt. She's a quality uh, engineer certified, quality auditor, a lean black belt, and uh, through the Motorola University, is also a certified Six Sigma uh, Green Belt instructor. She's giving back, and we're honored to have her tonight to ASQ community by sharing practical application of human development and leadership out of knowledge everyday situations. Deborah, thank you for being tonight with us and uh, we really appreciate your inputs and we're very excited to, to learn more from you. Sadita, thank you so much for that introduction. And I just want to say to everybody, it's my true pleasure and honor to be part of this organization. Um, I spent a lot of time in ASQ early in my career, and then I left the organization for some time due to family and focusing on my career. But when I returned to ASQ, because I realized that there was such a vast amount of, of, of community and network and knowledge that could support me and I could support them. I was so pleased to find out that HDNL was now a community and I really, really aligned with the body of knowledge because I truly believe the human side of our role as quality leaders is even more critical than all of the technical capability that we have. And, and it's so valuable, our subject matter expertise, but the human is what is the center of all of this. So I thank Sadida, Kieran. Uh, Brooks has been a wonderful coach of mine and there's been so many other people. But I do want to just start with my purpose and my objective here today um, and just let you know that it's my purpose here is to elevate you. You are my customer, you are my client. And I want that when we're done today that you've taken some time to engage with me to reflect with me and think about, as I tell different stories here, how it aligns with your experiences and your particular journeys as you try to elevate others. And I do this through hopefully inspiring you and giving you some additional thoughts that you can take away and action on. And just please know, 
I'm partnering with you. I am sharing content with you, but we're moving to forward together. This is a partnership. And if we can't address all of your questions, thoughts, comments now, I'm your partner. We're all in this together. If you want to connect with me when we're done, it's my pleasure. But on a personal note, <laughs> um, I am married 30 years. I have a wonderful husband uh, and also an entrepreneur. I enjoy the joys of having three children uh, who are becoming very productive citizens in their own right. And when I'm not uh, thinking about business, thinking about how I can improve things for others. I do love walking and cooking, writing and reading because they truly are sources of, of creativity and inspiration. And fun fact, I'm an amateur curler. I do throw stones on ice competitively. So if you want to learn more of that, I'm so happy to share that with you. But let me take you forward here into my journey here. And I always think about when we show up in life, it's a stage. I, I love being on a stage. I love sharing stories and seeing people in front of me truly enjoy what I share with you. And today we want to talk about reflective leadership. I think it is so important that we as quality leaders, professionals, whatever you're doing, any kind of leader, that what we do is so important because we certainly have to support people, community, business, customers, etc. But really, you need to reflect on you. So this whole presentation is about you. It's about me. It's about how you and I help each other. And it starts with reflective leadership. And I do take a definition, but I'll also share what I think as well, is reflective leadership is a way of approaching the work that we do and being a leader by leading one's life with presence and personal mastery. So this is so much more beyond your, your lean, your Six Sigma, your Agile, any of your, your technical capability. I praise it, I love it, it's so important. But you are also a tool in the toolbox. You need to master yourself, your purpose, your reason, and how you want to lead. And my call for action for you as we go through this story here and, and is that I want to engage with you. So we are going to take moments throughout this presentation to ask you questions. I'm going to ask you to think and listen and write down some notes on post-its because this is also for you to engage. And then when we give you some moments to engage via power, via poll or, um, you know, uh, Q&A, that you actively take a moment to share your thoughts and that we can elevate and grow together. So today is a, a play, it's a program. And in act one, we um, start with a hero and the hero is me, it is you, taking from a normal world of what we are used to doing in our profession and then we move into act two, where we go into an area which is unknown, unfamiliar, scary. There are changes. And this is where the hero grows and learns and goes through chaos and challenge. And finally, in act three in this presentation, we will bring you back to the normal world where the hero has learned new skills and talents and moves forward in their life for better purpose. And the theme all through and through is reflective leadership. So act one, traditional quality leaders and how they influence. This is to embrace who you are. I am a quality professional for over 20 years. And as a quality professional, we learn certain ways to take the information about how the service or business is doing and present it in a way to influence and share information and hopefully get, hopefully get action. And that serves us well. But our true calling is to inspire others to action. And in act one, we're going to show examples of what a typical quality leader may do who has not gone through the unknown or who has not taken time to reflect. And we're going to talk about this in the following slides. But before we move forward, I do need to understand uh, what you think in terms of why do you lead as a reflective leader? Why do you lead? And there are four or five um, answers. Nothing is right. And Sadita will now open up the poll. And I want you to think and put your first ideas on why do you lead? We have launched the poll. 
We'll give it a few seconds to respond. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, so okay, we have an active group here, so there is a quite percentage voting. Um, we'll give it a couple of more. That's going fast. It looks like they've been reflecting before, Deborah, <laughs> so they already know why they, they lead, which is good. Some reflection, self reflection is always uh, positive to hear. Excellent. We have about 70% people who voted. Take your time. We don't want to rush you. It's about reflection, so it's important we, we, we think through it. <laughs> and we have kind of used the one choice only situation, so it helps us really narrow it down to what really matters to us or we think it does. We have about 80% voted, so we can close it, I believe. Okay. Okay, there are still a few more people. 82%. Deborah, this is the first time we have uh, such a high engagement. Oh, I'm, pleased. I'm pleased that it's a, an interesting question for people to reflect upon. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We share the results and we have about 40% with the first choice, which is to elevate my performance of my organization, the performance of my organization. So it's a broader view. The second choice, let me actually write that down. Uh, the second uh, best option here is to help people achieve the organization objectives. Again, organization view. And the third one is um, to help people understand why quality is so important. Yes. Then we have a lower percentage with this. I'm looking to move up in the organization and to ensure customer trust and loyalty in the products. Quite interesting. So the first one is A, followed by C, then D. Correct? Correct, yes. Okay, so okay. we'll write that and back to you. Okay, thank you everybody for taking the time and I appreciate your um, strong response again, Sadita, keep me in check in terms of my audio, I had to change my location, but that's great and, and we're not going to answer the question right now because we're going to go back to this later, but I'm hoping that as we take you through the content, you potentially um, will validate your answer or maybe change your answer. So let's move to our story. So first I want to give um, acknowledgement to the um, picture on the left side. If you're not familiar with it, you should look up The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. And it's really an, a great visual to explain how we as leaders or as parents or, or community people, we tend to like to operate in the normal world where you can predict everything and uh, life is good. Um, and in act one, we will be in the normal world. Um, so this is how we're going to go through it. And just know that as I take you through this, it's actually a personal story. And so it's, it's very touching to me to have gone through the hero's journey, but it's a beautiful thing when you start in the normal world, you go down to the unknown where things are scary, you grow new skills um, by choice or by accident, and then coming out and realizing new strengths, new skills, and being able to take them and leverage into being a hero. So uh, think of yourself in this story as the hero, the quality leader or, or professional, but I'm gonna talk about my story moving forward. So this first chart, if I can just frame it for you, please do not um, look at it for all the detail, but simply what it represents. On the left side is some quality data that visually communicates the current state. In this case, it's around nonconformances or defects with the biggest opportunity being inadequate processes at 62%. And on the right side, typically we are trained as quality leaders that when we have deviations from standard that we are to communicate quantitatively and qualitative whether um, we are on target, not on target, and is it getting worse, is it getting better, and even some insights or thoughts. And so this is my work earlier in my career, and this was okay. 
So I want you to think as you look at this slide, maybe take some notes, what works with this kind of communication? What does not work? What could be improved? And I'll pause for about 20 seconds for you to put your thoughts down. So this content, from my perspective, this is how we are trained. And in my world, we hope that the picture and the words will influence action. And in many cases, it might. But in some cases, it's just information. And when we are done presenting the information, people return to their job. So again, there's nothing wrong with this. Some organizations are fine, but there could be other ways to get what you want. Um, and, and certainly feel free if you wanna start reflecting, putting some strong comments in the, the, uh, the chat or communication boxes. Sadita will take us there later. So let's move to later in my career. So in this visual, what you see here, and again, just look at it for a general, it is a house of quality. It is built on a foundation of certain programs. And on the top, you see um, different pillars or parts of the process. And there's a little bit of noise in the background where we plan, we do, we check, we act. And there's various initiatives that fall under these different pillars. So what worked for me was this was a great visual to explain to people the different areas where we could effect improvements in quality. Um, but, um, and, and a lot of people really, really, really like this. Oh, now I can see what this initiative is all about. But what is challenging about this is there could be some areas for improvement. So what I'm going to do is ask you to reflect and look at this visual display of content when communicating information. What works? I can hear this some background noise. What does not work? What can be improved? And I'll pause for 20 seconds before I reflect and talk to you about what I think. So 20 seconds, put your thoughts down. Maybe that's 15 seconds. <laughs> but anyway, um, when you look at this information on the surface, it looks good. And again, as quality professionals improve, we paint pictures to communicate messages. This is really good for painting a picture of complex pro projects. However, what it doesn't do is it doesn't tie to the bigger picture. People get excited about such initiatives. They'll say, yes, sign me up. But what's not miss what is missing here is really a connection to the broader purpose of why are we doing this? What is the call for action? What are the pain points in the business? Why are we doing this initiative to improve quality? It's completely missing from the message. And so this is an area where we could potentially improve, but again, still, this is traditional quality leadership. So let's move to this next example where, you know, I use this most recently in some of my work. And on the left side, you basically see a dashboard that shows various functional areas. And then along the type are different metrics. And a simple dashboard is a great visual that you can show what is in compliance and what is out of compliance. And you can quickly, as a leader, take people to the areas of non-compliance and then recommend action so we can move forward and make it all green. And also it's very important, forgive me, that on the right side as a leader, not only do you cite what is, what is working well, because maybe we want to leverage those lessons learned, but you should also come in with very clear proposals so that when you meet as a, as a leader, you can quickly make decisions versus having a lot of discussion and never getting an action. You are a facilitator of action. And so when you look at this kind of content and you're trying to communicate a message and get action, I want you to think about what works, what does not work, or what could be improved. And write your thoughts down or put your thoughts in the action box and I'll pause for a moment and then I'll come back and tell you what I think. This dashboard is an excellent tool and has worked very, very well to focus leaders, get their attention and get commitment to action. And I will say that very often this dashboard will start to turn green because nobody wants their function red. But what is missing from this also is that 
Today, we will turn them green, but then in two or three months from now, it's possible they will start to do, turn red again because sometimes processes degrade, people forget the overall purpose and vision, and then we are in the same room again saying, what do we need to do differently to meet all the objectives? So this can also be improved. So, what I want to do before we move into the hero's journey of moving to the unknown, I want to bring in some important insight from some leadership that really resonated with me. I recently read a book on rules of engagement by Carolyn Suara, building a workplace culture to thrive in uncertainty. And what this excerpt from the book really talks about, and I put my the main points here, is that why do sometimes we fail to get the results we desire? And it's because even if we have the best data, the best visuals, we may not have a compelling reason to change. So it's so important to understand how you work is just as important as the results that you get. And another inspiration for me, and if you have not seen this video with Simon Sinek, it really resonates about how can we as great leaders inspire action. And when you go through this process, typically on the outer part of the circle, uh, businesses will say, this is what you need in order to have better, faster, cheaper, beautiful, more age, et cetera. But we fail to explain why are they so important? And he proposes in this that we need as a leader, as an organization to start with our why, what is our purpose? And this is not necessarily the company vision. Every company will have a vision, a mission, guiding principles and pillars, et cetera. This, as I told you, is about you. You need to find your why and then your how in order to achieve the results that you need. So we're going to pause now here because I'm hoping you've thought a lot about this. Has your leadership style worked? Are you achieving the results you desire? How has it worked? Is it working? What's worked well? And if not, what's wrong? And so, Savita, I open it up for any thoughts or comments that the audience might want to share. I, I won't make a note. Uh, it looks like they hear noise on my end. Do you hear anything? Because I'm in a very silent room. When you, when you speak, I hear noise, and I have heard some background noise. Do you hear me well now, or do you hear still noise? I hear you, but with a little bit of uh, static or... Um, okay. As long as we understand the questions, if they have any questions coming, so we should be fine. Okay, yes. so we will launch the poll. It's the same one we had. It sounds, no, like somebody, sounds like somebody's slopping in water. That's weird. Yeah. I'm well. muted. Okay. So, um, no poll right now, just an open dialogue. If there's anything in the question and answer box. Not yet, not yet. Okay, then let's move on. So this is my story again. The hero, the quality leader starts on a path of reflection. So I just want to let everybody know that um, I was recently the head of quality for the number one flavors company, and we were not achieving the desired results. And mind you, it is depend on everybody to help the process. But I truly started to question my approach, my value, even my capability, even to the point of, do I need to look for another job? It was a very difficult time to me. So I realized I needed to pause and reflect, potentially take a different path in order to move my organization forward. So I took a, raft, a risk and I traveled into the unknown. And now I will share with you what was the particular situation that led me into the hero's journey. So uh, about two years ago, I needed to go to a global meeting to tell them in a presentation, what was I going to do to uh, achieve the results in the following year through my leadership in uh, North America? And what you see here is I arrived in Europe early and while I knew what I wanted to do in my presentation, I did not have all the content written and I was still thinking about what I needed to do. So as a creative, I want, wanted to start running and I brought my uh, post-it notes to the gym where I was exercising. And while I was listening to music and running, different ideas would come to me. And 
while I was running, but I was doing it safely and listening to uh, the music, I was asking myself questions like, why do I lead? What is important? What do I seek? What are my values? How do I get inspired? And then how am I going to lead my team differently? What kind of support do I need to give them? And then how do I align all these goals? So really, I haven't even talked about quality objectives, service objectives. If I was on a journey, I said, I need to do something different to get a different result. So honestly, this is what my dashboard looked like when I was done. It was full of post-it notes, full of different uh, thoughts. So that night, I probably stayed up most of the night taking my information and putting it into a PowerPoint that I felt extremely proud of because I went deep inside of myself to understand why do I do what I do and how do I need to do it differently? And so I stood in front of the global quality leadership delivering my message and I was passionate. I talked about my family, how I raised my family, how I wanted to keep calm in the world. I wanted to organize people so they could enjoy life. I didn't, didn't want chaos, so I leveraged my strengths of organization. How can I help people? How can I help our customers? How can I assure loyalty and do it in a way that's positive and focuses on my team's strengths? So I gave the speech of my life. And then this happened. I got the usual applause that you would get out of respect for delivering good information. I was very passionate about my information, but when I got to the end, I only had about five or 10 minutes to speak about the very specific results I wanted to achieve. We didn't spend a lot of time on it. I felt it was more important to deliver something about what I needed to do differently versus what I was doing. And after the meeting, my boss came up to me and said, I'm very disappointed in you. I said, you did not do what we asked. I said, it was very, very nice and very interesting, the why and your reflection and all of that, but you didn't spend enough time on what you needed to do so we could have Q&A and questions on it. And I was completely defeated. I really thought I delivered something that really was inspirational and, and was necessary for my region, but it was not received well. And it was an emotional time for me, but then this happened. So. Over lunch, I was still very upset. And then my colleagues, and I'm the hero, and if, if you share this story, you're the hero too. I sat down at lunch and they sat down with me and they told me that they loved what I said. They loved the angle that I took on purposeful leadership, why I was leading as a leader and how was I going to help the organization. They appreciated it. They said, we need more heroes like you. I said, we keep hiring the same kind of people. We get the same result and we need more people like you to think differently. I have also had people say that you make it look so easy. Reinventing yourself is so important. And so I had quiet followers that told me this is exactly what we need. And so it's very scary if you take a moment to reflect on your leadership and bring that out because it may or may not be received well, but if you don't try, you might not get the results that you're looking for. And so this is my story. And while it was very soulful and sad, it also brought, brought great joy to me knowing that people really, really said I made a difference. So I wanna just move a little bit forward to something that I recently came into, and I'm ultimately grateful for really reading the work from Brooks Carter on um, the positive approach, because this speaks to the how we lead. Once you understand your purpose, and there is so much good content in It's very important to lead with positive emotion. There will always be negative influences in organization. Quality leaders focus on deviation, exception management, how to close those gaps. But you need to do it in a positive way with empathy. And so the leading principle for how you lead, and I internalize this and I live this every day, and I'm going to continue to perpetuate, you know, per get people to do more of this, is we need to at least exhibit additional characteristics as enablers of how we lead to better results. And you must have at least three of these things, self-esteem about yourself, optimism about the future, resilience in the face of chaos or crisis. You need to come out strong and confident and have that energy and vitality. 
the self-determination that you're going to help your team through the crisis or the issue or the opportunity and also maintain positive relationships. Even if you cannot meet, see eye to eye with somebody, always look for the good and the strengths of at least the relationship, whether you like them or not. This is so critical to how you lead and reflect and how you wanna be a leader. And finally, I return to this content that I came into recently by Carolyn Suara. In her content, if you really wanna get a different result, she does re-emphasize, and this validates what we're talking about today, you need to reflect and connect with your own purpose. Why do you lead? How do you enable others to know their purpose and connect all of that? And then you connect it to the company's greater purpose as well. And once you have all that and you have purpose, then you can create a road and help other people to achieve their purpose. And then ultimately, you will achieve those objectives. Now, there's a lot of belief in here. But an organization is based on people, humans, human development and leadership. Finding purpose, finding your how, your why will get you the results. And I will take you to a place where I feel that is starting to happen. But just think about this. Know your why, know your purpose, how in a positive approach will get you the results you need. So continue to write some notes down because we may open up the Q&A again. So at this point, I do want to pause and allow you, if you have any comments, if you agree, disagree, have any questions, have you ever had such disappointment in your career? Did you pause and think and reflect about what you might do differently? And did you make a change as a result of this reflection? Did you get a different result? So I'll pause Sadita to see if there's any comments at this point. Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have one comment about changing, actually, how the leadership style has changed through experience and age with um, uh, with also facing the fears that, that come with it, you know, and being bold and being open to, to such a change. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I thank you for that comment. I I. My DNA, my style early in my career, and I would even say it's mine as well, is that I do not like conflict. I will steer clear of conflict and challenges with change. I'll often seek consensus. However, if you reflect and you look at your beliefs and your beliefs ground you and you understand your why and purpose, your passion will come through when you deliver an important message for change or to do something differently. And that energy is captivating. So it is a risk, but if you can find your why and your beliefs, regardless if you're early in your career or mid-career, if you practice it a few times, you will find that that will be your new way to help move an organization forward. Sadita, any others, comments? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. All right, thank you. So finishing up act two, how did I finish this story? So when I turned to reflection purpose and what did I need to do? I knew that my role was to provide vision and empower my team to remove the barriers so we could create customer loyalty. So I, my, my purpose was to help others. And if I helped others, because everybody knew what they, they knew their jobs better than me, we would be able to in effect a change in our customers. And obviously that impacts our revenue growth. So a few things happened after I took a different approach. My region out of four regions was last or number four. And by the time I left the organization, we had moved up to number two in terms of delivering our quality results to the point where they were even questioning my data because they couldn't believe the change we had made in terms of reducing critical issues, customer complaints, et cetera. A further thing happened, it's not noted here, but some of our customers who have, may have left us or we weren't a primary supplier, we started to have time to have partnering discussions with our customers and we started becoming part of the core list or entering into partnerships. So what we were doing in the organization, and yes, there were many other factors, good product, good service, et cetera, but it's all part of that differentiating model to, to lead with purpose, build those relationships, remove the barriers, and you can affect a significant change. And then I talked to you about people. My people in my organization were able to succeed to the point where several of my people actually left my organization for different and better opportunities. So we elevate people along the way. And what happened to me as well is that I had the opportunity to leave this organization. And now 
I lead a life in my new role, supporting others, helping them to resolve their business issues. But at the same time, I'm enjoying a more productive, joyful life and time with my family. So I took a new direction and got different results. So uh, are we still okay with our connection, Sidita? I'm just checking. Yeah, I can, I can hear you very well. Perfect, I just wanted to check. Um, okay, so anyway, um, moving forward, before we continue into Act 3, this is reevaluating re your approach. It's your call for action, and I want you to think about what you will do differently. If you're not achieving your desired results, I ask you take time to reflect. Ask yourself why, ask yourself how, and only then do you think about what you're going to do. And my challenge to you is that I don't think you should do this alone. I mean, it's good for you to reflect independently, put your thoughts down on paper, put them down on a whiteboard. Why do you lead? What is your greater purpose? But I do think you should also share your ideas with others because sometimes they are your mirror. They are your reflection of your reflection. And sometimes they can see something that you can't see. So collaborate with somebody. And I even offer myself to you to help you find your why. So I move forward and I give you an example before we bring this uh, to a close in a bit is a specific example where my client was in a place of chaos and they brought me in and they said, we need a more effective and efficient complaint management system. I'm always fighting fires. It's difficult to manage and I want to reduce my complaints and, and, and have a better process so everybody's accountable. So that was the what, but that was the easy part. So I sat my client down and we talked to each other and I said to them, I said, what are your pain points? Why are you always putting out fires? What do you really want to do that you're not doing right now? And so he opened up and talked about who he was as a person. He loves spending time with his family and sports and building relationships. And he simply wanted to have a process in place that was better and ultimately built trust with his organization and his customers. So it was not really about fixing a complaint management system, but he wanted more time to spend and have time with his family to have good relationships and spend time with his customers to have good relationships. That was his why and that was his purpose. So I moved to the result and it's a busy slide, but here is where we landed. And this really brought tears to my eyes when he finally said what his vision vision was, and we won't even talk about the details in between. He said, my vision is to consistently provide tier one service throughout the product life cycle, enabling brand loyalty and revenue growth. That has nothing to do with complaint management, but simply to be perceived as a tier one supplier. This was the nugget when we were talking this came out and this quality leader that I was working with finally found his voice. And this was the real calling. He needed to influence and move an organization forward to understand the, the reason why having a better response system, a better complaint management system, why is it important? And this is what he said. We want to behave like a tier one supplier who has an effective CAPA system throughout the entire product life cycle from creation to shipment by having a crisp system that the customer deserves. We become a relevant supplier and possibly a differentiator from our competition. When we do this, we instill confidence. We become a favorite supplier and that will lead to revenue growth. Oh my God. He connected the dots with why. He connected it to the customer. He connected it to revenue growth. And this is a message that he can help lead an organization to make the right decisions and then implement the what or the right processes. So this I know works. And my challenge to you is to think about how you can make this work for you. So. When we move into this, we're going to pull again. When you think about the hero's journey of going from the normal world, moving to an area where you're disrupted or you know you need to make a change, 
And then you would take the time to reflect on why you lead, how you lead, and what you lead, and come out in a better place to get a different result. In this poll, I'd like you to look at the responses again. Why do you lead? And would you change your answer? Um, and I'd like to, I'm very interested in seeing if uh, your answers might change. So Sidita, could you launch the poll again, please? Yes, we could uh, do the second one. Again, the, the answers are the same. The answer choices. Just uh, pick the one that you feel works best for you now. Okay, we have 30% uh, already. <sighs> Interesting. I'm in suspense. I can't see anything. <laughs> I, I can. It's live. <laughs> but I'm curious to see how much is going to change. So we have 60% who voted. Okay, we'll give you a few more seconds. <sighs> Hanging <in> there. <laughs> we have a 71%. Woohoo! That's good. Okay, so let's just um, close this one. Yes. And uh, we'll share the results. So okay. we have uh, now the first option, which we had 40%, now is 34%. Uh, we're still as a second option, uh, C, to help people achieve organizational objectives that went to 30%. Um, whereas D increased by 2%. Uh, teaching people about quality and why it matters. We have an increase on the second one, which went to ensure customer trust and loyalty in products and services that went to 12%. I believe it was about 5%, I don't remember before, but it was much lower. Uh, lower and the last one, it's a 2% as before. I'm looking to move up in the organization. So it looks like customer loyalty and external point of view, it increased uh, as well as the others decreased. Okay, so when we think about the first, they still picked A as the number one, followed yeah. by C, C, then D, B, and E, correct? Correct, uh, with okay. addition of some increase on the B, which was not before, and some decrease on the A, which was organizational objective increase. Okay. So this is very, very interesting. And thank you to everybody for your engagement and staying with us. We're, we're coming to the end here. But I want to, um, just so you know, um, this is not a test. It's just a poll. There are no right or wrong answers. So I'm going to give you my perspective and, and why I think, I really think the best answer is D. And my reason for that is it has the word why in it. <laughs> when we spend time and help others, teach others about quality and understand why it is important, then if you can get inside people's heads, in their heart, in their gut, and that's their purpose and your purpose, there is an opportunity to maybe um, move them to achieve the results. And I might suggest, and you were very close to this, the second most important thing is, and is the how, is I enjoy leading people to help them achieve the organizational objective. So D is your why. I enjoy, I really, really joy. This is in your heart, helping people to understand. That's your greater purpose. That's your greatest gift as a quality leader to tell people why and help them to understand their why. And then through your leadership, your happiness, your focus, your strength, you help others to achieve those results. And it's not wrong, but then when we spend some time on D and C, then the what happens. You elevate the performance of the organization as a result or an outcome. You get customer trust and loyalty, and you may move up in the organization, all outcomes or results of why and how. If you 
enjoyed this. If you have questions, if you have contrary views and you disagree with me, all feedback is a gift. So I share with you all of my contact information because I want to move forward with you together on this journey on reflection and how reflection is important for your purpose and understand how you will lead in order to get the results that you um, want to realize to support you and your organization. And that's all that I had to say today. I really um, enjoy um, thanking you for your time and engagement. And with that, I will hand it over to Sadita for um, opening it up for any comments or questions um, or anything else you would like. Thank you, Deborah. This was uh, really good. It's time to reflect. And sometimes we, we reflect even alone. <laughs> so we might have some people who, as you mentioned, might uh, go through this reflection time and have some comments and uh, questions later on, which is absolutely fine. They can reach you out. I'm glad you shared your contact. We do have some comments, uh, but we'd like also to open it to everybody else who might have any, either sharing their reflection times throughout this webinar, any questions they might have or challenges if they have tried something like this before, uh, they're all welcomed. Um, one of the comments we had here was about uh, the organization support in terms of um, current leadership, basically. They don't support or provide timely and honest feedback on the leadership styles, the pros and cons, unless you have a mentor or coach within the organization. Mm. Now, we do have mm. the performance reviews and all that, as we all know they exist, uh, but how much truly open discussions and some organizations don't even have, uh, they only have like feedback uh, from the top to the bottom instead of having like from the teammates or people who you work with. Not not all organizations have started to establish those. Um, do you notice this is a common trend, unfortunately, or? Yeah, so thank you for that comment, whoever left that, and please reach out to me if you want to talk forward. Yeah, sometimes the performance review process has good intentions, and if done right, you should get appropriate feedback. But I found that data is important to me and relationships. And so when I got feedback and I did what I was supposed to do, I sometimes didn't move up in the organization. But I would go to somebody outside my organization who I developed a good leadership or a relationship with, and they saw me when I was present and they saw me in meetings and I asked them, what do you see? What do you feel? How do I project? They were my reflection <laughs> to help me reflect on what did I need to change? And they gave me some of the best advice. And even th that I've left the organization, we continue to maintain a great relationship supporting each other. So find a mentor, a coach, optimally sometime somebody outside your organization to really tell you the truth. Sidita? I agree. I'm actually listening. We had, uh, we had some comments? scenarios yeah. uh, like that and another comment similar to that one. One of the comments is sometimes yeah. in organizations giving feedback from the lower levels to the top an internal meeting within uh, higher ups and wider audience is not taken well. Well, I agree, it's not taken well if it's like in front of everybody and negative reper uh, repercussions. I guess you would have to find the appropriate time and place to do that because not everybody is welcoming negative feedback or in front of everybody, everybody else. So we might be careful on how we deliver these whys, uh, which can be for ourselves or what we like and why we do things, but also providing feedback for somebody else. We need to do it carefully in the right settings as well. Um, what what would you, would you have anything to add to that? No, just well said. I mean, again, we are dealing with humans, hence human development and leadership. We need to do it with kindness, with happiness, with professionalism. We need to be direct, but also, you know, be specific, um, and, and help people to understand, do they see it the same way? And then talk about opportunities to um, improve. Um, but sometimes it could be to move in a different direction. So maybe you don't like the feedback and that's okay too. 
but I do ask for you to sleep on it 24 hours and reflect on the information that you received. And I promise you when you wake up in the morning, you will think about the possibilities that maybe there is something in what they said. Maybe they didn't give you the message in a way that you reacted well. But even when my husband gives me feedback, I push back immediately, but then I think about it and he said, there's always some truth and value. So always look for the value, even if you perceive it as negative feedback. Maybe they cannot articulate it in a way that feels good. And, and, I, and I agree. Like, again, we're always in the human uh, element side of, uh, of the relationships here. So anything, any process, anything that uh, tapes or anything like that has to be put in the right context. And the context might be different from different organizations and different people. Um, so, yes, yes, listen and take the input, but also like become independent on, on applying them and then change them as needed. Like, uh, you, I'm obsessed with Simon Sinek as well, and I hear one of the comments here was that uh, somebody had already started applying it um, by by sharing with the team what what they are behind, what the reason, and what their values, and what they're trying to aim, and how and what. Um, another comment we had is uh, you're also in the money side, like people want to, to pursue that, and usually once the why is understood, it's time to either assist or get out of the way. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of not so okay with this comment. I guess it depends on how practical people want to be. But for me, it really depends on how do you make sure also that this why is understood. Like you can deliver a one-way conversation and maybe you share all your passion and everything. But did they understand uh, and, and why, why they didn't? And, and there is three whys in an organization. There is a why which is self-inner uh, call. That's your why. There is a why of the people you yeah. work with, and there is a why of the organization. So all these whys also have to be aligned. You talked a lot about alignment before, and uh, we, we don't have to forget that even with the soft skills of, in this case, the, the whys and the, the calling that we have, that also has to have a structure, an aligned structure um, to be successful. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it's... You know, I when you deliver a message or information or feedback, you think you deliver it concisely. But until you know the person received the message and they can explain back to you the why or in a way that they understand, it's like you can listen to something, but maybe when you t write your notes on paper and then when you take your notes and put it in a computer, it's how you internalize the information. And if upon them listening, they still don't understand, then you need to communicate in a different way until they truly can say the words in their own way. And and Deborah, I guess you have experienced this too. Like it's always, um, I'm very inspired from leadership, right? And we have these webinars and it's always like we get into this energy mood and we want to be perfectly changing mm -hmm. ourselves and changing others and we feed each other's energies. Yes. And then you go with the reality, and for us as well, we fail. So I think it takes a lot of guts to stick there and hear somebody who says, okay, I heard your why, I don't care, okay? I'm busy, I have to do something else. Uh, it takes a lot of guts to stay there and also maybe put your why a little bit behind, understand their, uh, their side as well. So it's not that easy to, to learn by doing, I believe. So it, you really have to believe in this approach, yeah. otherwise you won't stick, like you won't be sustainable. I'm yeah, kind of curious about your experience when you mentioned you you shared your why and um, I've experienced multiple situations like that because I, I kind of there but did you feel like if you went back did you feel like you would do anything different like maybe either prepare them for something like that is coming or also share some of the what that they actually were looking for anything else that you would have done differently as you reflect back yeah, great question. What would I have done differently to get a different result? I'm torn. I am very torn by that. It is possible if I had always delivered content in a consistent manner that met the expectations, and I always did. I always was very concise, bullet, 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 concise, yeah. <laughs> etc. And if I made a change, I did not prepare my audience for the change. So I might have alerted my boss that I'm going to deliver content in a different style so he could participate and maybe enrich it mm -hmm. and maybe suggest I change the timing. And then I would have been aligned with my boss with a change in my approach. And then it may have been received differently because maybe he could have jumped in and supported me to others to think about why and how. 
that's my reflection on it. However, I don't think I would do anything differently because I went on the hero's journey to mm -hmm. a dark place and came out in a better place. Of course, of course. And, and sometimes it don't always support you. As we mentioned, you might share your why, but it's not always. Uh, depends how much time you have to actually spend on that preparedness because you might have a really like closed door and say, no, don't take it that direction. Uh, so sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a trade-off that you have to decide. Brooks, yeah, you anything to add from you? No, oh, yeah, I, w I don't want to make a comment. Uh, Deming was a passionate dude, but there's a tendency for quality to become very dispassionate. And <clears throat> we write out our statistics and do our Pareto's and find mm -hmm. the answer. And that's that's just not enough. That's that's not the essence of quality. And I think you you have to address issues like why in order to get to get to where you want to go. Um, and I we're, we're devaluing devaluing quality by being so dispassionate with it. Beautiful. Do you feel, Brooks, like uh, the traditional management system and theories at that time did not like kind of call for this need? Because when I went through Lean Six Sigma, to me, again, all this leadership part of it was absolutely missing in the process yeah, itself. Sure. Yes, they talk about collaborate or implementation plan, things like that, but not really in the in the why and the leadership and, and the servant leadership kind of thing. And I'm just like, how come? I mean, <laughs> I feel like it is because of the the time when it was developed that this part was missing because of traditional management uh, theories at that time. That's, that's ri it's risky. <laughs> it's Let's risky. take the risk. Bro. Let's take the risk. It's risky Let's within work. organizations. As long as we step a foot out of it, we are all open to talk about the issues and we're all open to be fragile and, and, and talk about what we are weak at or other people around us. So I feel like we just need to kind of dare to be authentic and truly see that those will impact the results of the organizations as well. So <laughs> that's what we're here yeah, for. So. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> we get too yeah. much into this and we forget it's about uh, time to close. So I really, really appreciate it, Bra. You are in Singapore. We're making you have a webinar for us for free for everybody at 2 a.m. at night. So now about 3 a.m. So really, really appreciate it. And I hope uh, more people will have time to reflect and uh, reach out if they want to and uh, continue these beautiful conversations that we're having tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much for your leadership and your support. Thank you, everybody. And I also wanted to thank our uh, attendees who have been very active tonight. That's great to see. Uh, that's what we want. At uh, some point, we will start opening as long as there is no noise uh, barriers to attendees who would like to raise questions even by talking. So uh, we will go uh, with the flow and we'll see how this goes. But tonight we had some um, uh, issues with my audio, it looks like, even though I don't hear anything on my end, but it might be something on the computer. So today's webinar presentation uh, has been asked to be delivered and we always share the presentation and recording. So the presentation will be under my ASQ community in the days to come and the, within a week or so and the YouTube channel as well as usual will have the recording. We already have our next webinar posted uh, that will be held in uh, July 10th uh, where we will learn about mentorship done right as deborah mentioned don't do it yourself <laughs> we will talk about mentorship done right essential thoughts on mentor and mentee and that will be delivered by uh, dan hopwood um, great uh, speaker we're very excited to to learn more about mentorship done right and the registration can be done under my asu community for those who are members they will receive uh, an email as well to get automatic notification on future webinars even for those who are not members, they can uh, either follow our LinkedIn page or they can sign up for our free newsletter through our website. We do have a survey, which is like a one-minute survey. It helps us to improve for future webinars. Um, so feel free to, to fill that. You will have a pop-up screen if you are on the computer. If not, then you will receive an email. As I mentioned for the credits, uh, for those who attended 40 minutes, I will be sending as uh, soon as I close this webinar an email, a separate email, uh, that you can use as uh, a claim for your credit and save it as a PDF. 
thank you again all for your time tonight. We will uh, look forward to having you on our next webinar. Have a good night, everybody.